I'm going to want a background color. So I'm going to select a new layer. And I'm going to go ahead and put in a background, even though my the top is not completely finished. I'm going to take this down to 50% so that I can see the entire thing. I'm going to use my rectangle tool and I'm going to set a fill color of blue and I'm going to set the alpha back to 100%. And then I'm going to draw a rectangle just a little bit larger than the stage to give me a background color. I've blocked my petals, so I'm going to name this background. I'm going to select it, and if I move it behind the petals, then I will just have the work that I've created. Right now I'm going to put it behind the original, but, and I can also hide it so I'm not looking at it, but when I'm done, I'll be able to just use that. Now for this part in here, I could do a lot of different things. I think what I want to do is to use my spray tool, but before I do that, I want to actually create my own paint brush, my own brush pattern to use for the center. And I probably want to put this on another layer that will actually be behind the petals so that if I go over it won't matter. But for right now I will put a new layer in and I will call it Flower Center. And I will open up my spray paint tool and then I can choose to put in a new symbol. To do that I'm going to choose insert new symbol and I'm going to call it GR seed and it's going to be a graphic and I'm going to use my paintbrush with an assortment of dark orange You always want to try when you're creating a, a brush for yourself to stick around the center point. And if you get a little bit off there, which you can do when you're using the mouse, you can always erase it. Then we pick some other colors. And layer them in here. not really worrying if they overlap because I want to get a sense of depth. Now this can potentially break flash. So you have to be very, very careful. What will happen is it will use up a lot of memory. So I'm going to show you a way to do this correctly. First, correctly and incorrectly. So you don't break flash. So we am going to go back to scene one. And I've created my flower center. I'm locking everything else. And I'm going to go back to, in this case, I want to actually zoom in on a little. Ah, I did not change my brush. Command Z on the Mac, Control Z on the PC undoes things. So in my properties for my spray brush tool, I actually want to change my spray to be the symbol I created. And now, Again, I'm having it overlap the edges a bit. Now this actually is not a really big space that it's covering. And I'm very briefly touching things. So now I'm going to go back to 100%. And if I want it to look correct, I would drag it below the petals. Notice that that will overlap it. But I'm having a problem here. Because these are all separate shapes, you'll notice they're outlined with blue. They're objects. It makes it harder for Flash to keep track of them. So I'm going to select Modify, Break Apart. Look at how many different symbols there are. Modify, Break Apart, and that might break Flash right there. It's good. This computer's 
really good because I've got 8 gigs of memory. On a normal 32-bit system, this would make Flash lock up. The better thing to do in Flash, rather than use the spray paint tool, is to spray paint a small area, do what I've just done, and break apart three times. Now I can combine these into one symbol, which I will call GR Flower Center. Now if I had wanted to use that again, I'm just going to take it a second, And you can see how much memory this is taking. It's just making it spin. I probably should have done about a quarter of that then copied and pasted each symbol. Because once it's in the library, which is what happens when you make it a symbol, and now I have my flower sem center object, I could take it and drag additional copies onto the stage, which actually uses up less memory and resources in Flash, and I would have been better off breaking that into four pieces and doing it. So now I'm going to hide that. Now I could write, uh, create each of these petals individually, or I can take a copy and paste it, and I've just pasted multiple ones right on top of each other, and I did not make this a symbol because not all the petals are identical. I can use my free transform tool, change the pivot spot here, make it pivot a little, put it in place. That white dot controls the pivot point when you're changing the area. So you want to put it near where it's going to be pivoting from. And I could actually use multiple layers to stack these above or below. Then with my black arrow tool, I can slightly change the shape of each petal so that they're not all identical. But notice that they have joined once I've done that and they've become one shape. I could continue to select my shapes, use the free transform tool, and build my flower in this fashion. So your goals for this lab assignment are to spend about 90 minutes. You don't have to completely finish a picture, but I want you to work on using various tools to create an artistic version of whatever you had created. And I would definitely have some work to do this on this because I could break this apart or erase behind it so it's not a lab overlapping because I have some transparency here that became part of it instead of laying on top of it. I really should have put the highlights on another layer. So I'd go back and try that again. But it's okay to do things wrong in this because the goal is to learn as much as you can because for your first actual project. You're going to be doing this for an entire project over two or three days of class time on a complete landscape. So learn. Be free to make mistakes. I encourage you try things that you don't know if they'll work or not so you can get a handle on how the flash tools work. And that's the first in class lab.